What's up everybody, this is Cakes, and today we are going to do a special thing which is C++ hot code reloading. Which means that we will be able to change code of the game and then see these changes while the game is running without having to close it. And in my opinion this is the most efficient thing that you can do as a C++ programmer or a game developer when developing a game. So let's get straight into it. Now what I have right here is the final example of how we are going to be building our game. Basically what we have to do is we have to create our game as a shared library. So basically the way this works is we're going to create a game.dll file which is a dynamic loaded library and then this library is going to be loaded when the game starts or runs. And then whenever we make a code change we are going to recreate this game DLL file using a timestamp. And once we see this new game DLL file being updated, we are going to unload the old one and load in the new one. The general overview of this is going to be, since the game is now its own thing, it needs to have access to the renderer. So for example, the game has access to this rendering data right here, which is a static variable. And if you create a dynamically loaded library or a DLL file, then this render data is only part of the game.dll and unless we actually export that part, the engine will not be able to have any access to it. And so what we are going to do is we are going to change this render data static variable to a pointer and now the game will need to have access to this pointer which is a memory location and then in the main file we're going to allocate this render data and then supply the pointer to this memory location to the game and now whenever we reload the game we will supply the pointer as well to it so that the game can update the pointer if, for example, we created a new DLL file. And that way, the game can write to the render data, and then the engine, which is loading the game DLL, will read the data from the game, and then use that in the OpenGL renderer, or whatever renderer we are going to use in the future, maybe, you know, DirectX or something. And uh, we not only have to do that with the render interface, with the render data right here, we also have to do this with input. For example, we have a static global variable for input. The game reads this, but if the engine has its own global variable and the game has its own global variable, they never sync up. So over here, we also have to turn this into a pointer. And this is the reason why I wanted to do this code reloading early on, because these changes need to happen. And usually you don't think about these. And as we add in more constructs, we have to change more pointers. Okay, now that we have changed the input and the render data to pointers, we need to to not only allocate those using a for example bumper locator but we also have to change everything that we have accessed for example the dot operator no longer works we have to supply the error operator everywhere and this is what many people criticize about c plus plus or c where if you change the data type from a normal i don't know thing to a pointer now you have to change how you access the members but okay so the first thing that we do is we create another bumper locator and then we call this a persistent storage and we also allocate 50 megabytes and then we go ahead and bump allocate the input and render data this time using the persistent storage and as you might have guessed from the name this storage is not going to be reset every frame and now that i have noticed it the transient storage is not actually being reset in the while loop so the way this works is after we call swap buffers we also set the transient storage used to zero I'm also going to quickly add an error handling just to check if we managed to allocate the render data and the input. If we didn't, then we throw an error and we return minus one. After that, we begin by cleaning up the rendering interface. There's not much to do here, just change the dot to a pointer. Then I guess we clean up the GL renderer. So over here, render data, transforms. Then down below where we access input and the render data as well. Make sure that you catch all of the errors. It should look something like this when you're done. Okay, and then the last thing is the Windows platform. So it looks like we are able to build. Now we have made this change and the game still runs, which is very good. Now we can actually go ahead and start extracting out the game into its own standalone thing. In order to do that, we have to switch to the build.sh file. And then we create a clang plus plus minus G for the debug symbols command that takes in the game C plus plus file and source. The shared option is used to create a dynamically loaded library. Then we call that the game.dll and we also supply the warnings that we want to suppress. Okay, apparently building will now create us a game.dll and also an ILK and PDB file on the left here, which means we have debug symbols and we could potentially already load in this file. But if we load the game right now, 
there's nothing we can do because we are not exposing any function to the outside so that means we are not able to load in any function from the engine first we have to do that and we do that with update game and so the first step that we have to do is we create a new file and call that game.h in the game.h we supply a pragma once then we include the schnitzel lib and we create sections for the game's globals, structs and then functions, which are the exposed functions. And then below that we create an extern C local scope. And inside the local scope we create a function that is called update game and that has the prefix decode spec DLL export. Now that we are done typing, uh, we can see that we have a previous definition in the game.cpp file. And we need to make sure that it matches this function definition right here, which means we have to copy the decode spec and go into the game.cpp file and paste it right here. And then once we have added this to the void update game function, we also have to make sure since it's still not ready with the error, we need to go into the main file. And instead of including the C++ right here, we include the header. Otherwise, we have the function definition twice. I suppose suppose you're wondering what this means and it's quite blurry for me too but basically this is a syntax for specifying storage class information which means that it is a hint to the compiler to know that we are going to export because uh, we can inside the decode spec we can supply attributes and we are going to dll export this function which means that this function can be loaded from the outside and then we have access to the function pointer and we want to get access to the update game function pointer so we can call that within our engine in the update loop but we have a problem this is windows specific which means that we have to extract this out and we are going to replace it with a call to export fn this will be a define in our schnitzel lib so we're going to switch over to this and i guess we'll program this in we add in the export function define on windows it is going to be underscore underscore decode spec on linux by default it is actually nothing at all because linux by default exports everything and then on apple aka mac i have no fucking idea nah. we'll wait on the mac part to be finished Okay, once we have this, uh, please make sure that you also go into the game.cpp file and then replace the decal spec with the export fn. Now, if we build the program, we should get an unresolved external symbol to update game. Which means that the engine now is unable to find the function called update game from just the header file. We need to implement that or we need to have like some sort of implementation. And this is where the function loading comes into play. To give you some overview of how this works, we have actually already done this with OpenGL. We need to create a function pointer to the update game type. Then we need to load the update game type from the game DLL and store that in the pointer. And then we need to create a wrapper function around the update game and call the pointer inside of that function. So for that we switch over to the main.cpp file and start by creating sections. We start by declaring the update game type, which is a decal type of update game. Basically what this means is it looks at the update game function and then takes into account the parameters and the return value of it. And this is basically just a short handle to retrieve whatever the type of function is. And then we create a static global variable update game pointer, which we will then need to get from the DLL. And then below the main function, we're going to implement the update game function. Now the last thing left to do is actually load the function from the DLL. And in order to do that, I want to create a function that does everything like that because this is actually platform specific code. And for that, we have to create a bunch of platform specific functions. The function will be called reload game DLL. And we are going to implement it at the very bottom. The entire function looks something like this. We hold a static variable of the game DLL and then we also store the last timestamp of when the file was last changed. We always get the current timestamp of the game DLL, which is the one that we are writing to in the build script. If that timestamp is ever greater than the previous one, then we want to free 
the current game DLL that we have loaded. And this is where it gets interesting. We are not going to actually load in the game DLL file, but we are going to create a new file called game load.dll. The reason for that is because if we load the game DLL file and keep it because we need it for the function pointer, then we cannot write to it within our build script, which means that we have to load the game load DLL get access to the function pointer in that file and then overwrite the game dll from within our build script and so that is what the game dll pointer at the very top is holding so that means when we call the platform load dynamic library function we are loading the game load dll and storing that in the game dll pointer if that is successful we get the update game function pointer from within the game dll and then set the last edit timestamp to the current edit timestamp. So in order to do that, you might see that we have to implement a free dynamic library function platform specific, a load dynamic library function and a load dynamic function. And on top of that, we need to have access to the transient storage inside of this function. And I think I want to supply that using the bump allocator at the top transient storage. So in the platform.h file, we have to add these functions as well. We create a void pointer platform load dynamic library, then a void pointer platform load dynamic function, which takes in a void DLL and a character pointer to a function name, and then a boolean platform free dynamic library, which takes in the dynamic library. We yoink all of these three functions, and then we switch over to the Win32 platform, and at the very bottom, we start implementing. The platform load dynamic library function calls the function load library A. Again, the A stands for ANSI encoding when using strings. Just notice this needs to be a percentage S right here. Uh, if we don't have a result, we throw an assertion to hold the program, and then we return the result. The platform load dynamic function gets the proc address, which is something we should be familiar with that takes in the dll and the function name then we obviously assert on the function name whether we got that or not and we return it as a void pointer to be platform agnostic the platform free dynamic library takes in a dll and then calls the free library function of windows again we assert and then we return a boolean of the result so once we are done with this we switch back to the main.cpp file because there is an error and it looks like the transient storage cannot be supplied as a pointer because it is already a pointer okay so it should look something like this now what is left to do is the game for example when when we draw a sprite in the game, you see that we access the render data pointer. The game DLL has its own instance of the render data pointer. That means we need to supply this data from within our engine to the game, which means that our update game function needs to take in a pointer to render data. And then it seems like we also need to include the rendering interface in here. And for the future, I will also include the input.h and supply that at the bottom because we need that in the future for sure to check whether we have pressed the key, for example. Which means now we have to update our function in the game with the new header. And then we notice that we don't actually have input here, which means we forgot to include the game.header file at the very top of the game. Now we should have access to this and we don't actually need the rendering interface anymore because we are including it in the header file. If you want, you can clean up. Then we also have to propagate the changes to the main.cpp file, of course. Over here, the update game takes in the render data and the input pointer. And then of course, in the while running loop, we also supply the render data and the input that we allocated earlier. And then we also, since we changed the parameters of reload game DLL, we have to update that at the very top where we declare the function. If we build and run the program now, then we get an exception. Basically, it's telling us that render data is null. And the reason for that is because we are calling draw sprite in update game. We are supplying the pointers here, but we are not assigning them. And we could do that by assigning the render data to the render data in and the input to the input in if the render data is unequals the render data in. And now if we run the program, we should be able to see the exact same window as before, which means that we are now effectively loading our game as a shared library and we are getting the function pointer to the update game function we are loading that in and then we are calling the update game function from within our engine now we have two separate entities that work together unfortunately we are not quite done yet if we go into the game and let's say we uncomment out our for loops here and then build we get an error that the linker has failed because it couldn't access the game pdb file and therefore write to it 
And this is where we have to do like a tiny hack inside of our build script. We're going to create a timestamp and then use that timestamp in the file name creation of the DLL file and then move aka copy or transform the game timestamp dll into a game dll that we will then load and since the timestamp changes the file is not locked anymore by windows by windows i mean visual studio code so what we have to add in and i'm going to copy this because it's easier we have to get the timestamp by calling date and this is where the sh file is to our advantage that is cross-platform we can call this on any platform which is really cool and then when we create the game dll file we do an underscore dollar timestamp in addition to that you can see all of these files right here if we do an underscore timestamp here we will spam this directory with different files to combat this we can just remove any game underscore files that we find in the directory and then finally we call the move command from linux turning the game timestamp dll into a game dll if we now build the program you can see at the very bottom that we are creating a timestamp lib nxp file taking a look into the folder will also show that as well but we also have our game dll that got renamed and then right now if i try to comment this out and build again the dices are gone now we still get errors and this time they are talking about the schnitzel executable which means it is also trying to build and write to the schnitzel library or the schnitzel engine but that is fine because it's already running and so there won't be any changes to that and so this is where i want to go into the pros and cons you can see that we are passing in the render data and the input pointer those structures are present in the game for example input is being loaded inside the game and then a different or in this case the same version is being loaded in the main file which means if we go ahead and change the input struct and then reload the game the engine doesn't know about that change which means that we will have memory corruption or the game expects a different structure for the input than the engine actually has and so there is the limitation in this approach we can only make game specific changes to structures and the flow of code for example we can you know comment out or comment in this for loop then build the game again and we should see our dice is being drawn again but in my opinion it is very rare that we have data changes and even if we have data changes we will just reload the program and uh, this is still a very nice technique programming game in because oftentimes you want to debug this one particular part of your game which keeps replaying and uh, being able to reload the game just like that is very helpful and this is everything that you need to know about hot reloading in c i hope you enjoyed the tutorial if you did please leave a like and subscribe for more the next time we are going to create an orthographic camera into d i think it is time that we scale the pixel art properly to the window and then being able to resize the window properly as well. Until then, have a good one. Peace! In my opinion, this is the best thing that you could do when programming in C++ and it will make you 